In the previous chapter, we looked at the thermodynamic property of Gibbs free energy, which we can write as delta G. And in this video, we're going to relate that to an electrochemical cell and the cell potential. So recall, if delta G is less than zero, then that means we have a spontaneous reaction or a spontaneous process. And since this is chemistry, we're always concerned about the chemical reaction. And there's another equation that we're going to relate to the cell potential that we can calculate from the standard reduction potentials. And that is delta G is equal to negative NFE. And N is going to be the number of electrons transferred during the oxidation reduction process. A lot of times that's really obvious from the balanced equation, how many electrons are transferred, but oftentimes this is difficult to determine. And so I'll do that later in a video where we actually determine the number of electrons transferred. F is Faraday's constant, and what that represents is the charge of one mole of electrons. So if we take the uh, charge of one electron and multiply by a mole, then that is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So this is a fundamental value. This is the charge of one electron. And if we want a mole of electrons, we're just going to multiply this value by one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's that many items per mole. So if we do that calculation, we're going to get Faraday's constant. And that, I'm just going to round that to 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. So Michael Faraday did a lot of work with electricity. And the E that we see up here in this equation is just going to be the cell potential that we have been calculating using the table of standard reduction potentials. So E is the E cell. And remember, we can, I don't know what, my camera, not focusing all that well there. And remember, this is the calculated value of the electrochemical cell. So E cathode minus E anode, or this is that value that we've been calculating. The math trick for that is the big number minus the small number. So if we go back and look at our chemical reaction with zinc, so we had zinc solid in the presence of copper ion in solution. So copper two, remember, would be a dissolved solution of copper. And zinc is oxidized in that process. Zinc is higher on the activity series and is more easily oxidized than copper. So zinc is oxidized and copper metal is reduced to solid copper. So in this balanced equation, it's easy to see by looking that the number of electrons is two. So N is two moles of electrons. And if we look at Faraday's constant, that's 96,500, which we're rounding. We know that number 
much more precisely than that, but this is close enough. That is coulombs per mole of electrons. And then the E cell for this would be the value obtained from the standard reduction potentials table. And this isn't the one I used before, but copper. Going to copper plus 2 gives us a value of 0.337 volts. And zinc, zinc's reduction potential is negative 0.763. So when we calculate that potential, the big number, 0.337, we're going to subtract off a negative 0.763. And that is going to give us a positive potential of 1.10 volts. So if we plug this into the delta G equation, we get negative 2. And that's really 2 moles of electrons. That's in Faraday's constant is 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. So our moles of electrons cancel. And the potential is 0 0.110 volts. And I did not say this earlier, but a volt is defined as a the energy required to move uh, a charge. So the potential the potential difference that has to exist before an electron can be transferred, we could rewrite those units as a joule per coulomb. And so if we rewrite volts in those units, our coulomb values will also cancel. So delta G, when we do this calculation, will always be in joules. So if we do that, 2 times 96,500 times 1.1. If we do that calculation, we get a large number, 212,300 volts. I'm, I mean joules, excuse me. I'm going to round that to 212 kilojoules. So instead of reporting that large number in joules, We'll just convert that back to kilojoules. And I forgot the most important thing, the negative sign. So the negative sign is part of the formula for calculating delta G. And recall on a previous, in a previous video, we discussed that anytime we have two metals together, that the cell potential is always going to be greater than zero because we calculate that by taking the big number minus the small number. So if we have two metals in an electrochemical cell, electrons will be transferred spontaneously. Faraday's constant is also a positive number and so is the number of electrons transferred. And delta G, recall, is also a measure of the maximum work that we could get out of a system. So in this case, for an electrochemical cell, the change in Gibbs free energy will always be negative because of this negative sign. And so for this particular example, for this camera, my lights have a glare. This was the delta G calculated for the reaction at standard temperature and pressures, 212 kilojoules.